Whoop ba ba Papa Zoo here once again, and today I got a beautiful totem build for you. It involves a particularly cold skill called Frost Bomb of Instability. Unlike the regular version of this skill, there is no cooldown and there is no debuff. But what the Frost Bomb of Instability does offer is over twice the base damage and has a slightly reduced duration before it pops off and does damage. Reason why I chose this skill is because I thought it would be quite fun to see if an underused spell could go the distance and actually be viable. It did take quite some time to fine tune this build, however, I went through many iterations. And I'll post all of the POBs down below. But at one point, I even switched to self-cast Inquisitor. I think that this skill can be built around many different ways, but for me personally, the best of both worlds offensively and defensively is what you see now. This skill also has a fantastic synergy with Diala's Malfaction Armor and the Less Duration Support Gem. Instead of waiting 1.5 seconds for the Frost Bomb to go off, when the Less Duration Support Gem is socketed in the green socket in the armor to give it more quality, it makes the duration go down to 0.4 seconds. Since this is a totem build, we do have to wait for the totems to be summoned and then for them to then... <laughs> cast the scale so there is definitely some delay but you can be the judge jury and executioner yourself as to is the duration too long or not there are ways to reduce the duration even further matter of fact we are just five passive points away from having the duration reduced to less than 0.2 seconds a ton of damage comes from the anathema ring and the three curses we use on silken targets which are assassin's mark frostbite and elemental weakness. I'm also stacking power charges through the corrupted plus one will clash helm and Malachi's loop shield. Defensively once again I focused on max block and spell block, flesh and stone and endurance charges. In tier 17 maps the build does fine but it's very much place a totem and flame dash away playstyle. Almost like stutter stepping. Also sometimes trying to kill mobs around a corner or in a alleyway or hallway can be tricky if they cast or attack non-stop but it's manageable you just have to get used to the playstyle. i will upload a tier 17 map separately i will also upload a tier 17 map when i change this build up tremendously to be more of a glass cannon build so you can see the comparison lastly i did recently acquire the progenesis flask just for that little extra defensive layer but it's not a requirement it is not mandatory it's absolutely not needed and the flask alone is worth more than the rest of the build combined. All right, let's take a look at the gear. Nice dagger, rune chanted with spell damage, plus one will clash, great for capping spell block. I was using heat shiver before this. Malachi's loop shield, before this I was using a plus one to max totems recover, recover life on block shield. Relicish boots, of course, to have all charges up permanently. Belt that gives me life and resistances, decent gloves that I crafted cold exposure on, and the unnervage. Nice ring with cast speed, life, and the much needed mana regeneration. Anathema with ignite protection, plus three to frost bomb gem dragon fang amulet, best in slot for damage. Plus two to duration male faction armor, super nice, not expensive at all, at least not mid league. Plus two duration corruption is best out of all of them, in my opinion, because it even helps the less duration gem. Bottled Faith for damage, Progenesis for defense, again, not a requirement. Diamond, fl Diamond Flask for damage, Quicksilver for utility, less <laughs> Life Flask for uh, living. On tier 17 maps, I also started using the Sorrow of Divine Flask to ensure my energy shield is actually being put to use. Regular medium cluster jewels that offer ancestral echo and sleepless entries work just fine. I, however, bought two megalomanic cluster jewels to get more AoE and block chance. In the glass cannon version, I use the annihilating light and soul mantle. In the self cast inquisitor version, I had a super cool interaction with the tenebros ring, militant faith jewel, and solipsism a passive node to reduce the elemental duration on me to zero. Pretty neat interaction. I was super proud of myself when I got it all together and then the build was kind of eh. So 
Anyway, definitely an interaction I'll try to shoot for in the future. Builds. Anyways, as promised, I tryharded on leveling and got through the campaign in 3 hours and 13 minutes. Pretty sweet. Again, doing the same strat as before for leveling. POBs and the guide linked below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time with another beautiful build. Shout out to uh, Lanky SOB for being my 500th subscriber. You are a gentleman and a scholar. I appreciate your questionable tastes in entertainment. All right, bye.